kind of great fake passport. So we're living in a world with always more global problems. Like globalization is going in at an always faster pace and, and problems arise that we didn't have maybe 30 years ago or that they were not as urgent as they are now or as you know like global in their character. So when you when you got global issues, you need global solutions. No? And um, I believe that from a European perspective, that means we need European solutions, we need common solutions because you cannot tackle problems like climate change or the social question. Um, international security, digitalization, migration, so many, many global issues, you cannot work on them, you cannot solve them on a national level. You know, how can we support each other? Um, but, but so you ask this uh, migrants here? What do you think like, makes people, com really convinces people to, to follow this, like, a, an ideology such as feminism? or such as climate change is real, or such as unite Europe. Um, first, first of all, deleting the stereotypes of what feminism they think is and what it actually is. For example, the story with the interview you told us yesterday. It was uh, an interviewer who, who interviewed women in high positions and asked them to, yeah. to repeat the questions they were getting most asked in interviews and it was like, how do you combine your career with your family? Yeah, why did you put on that blazer today? <laughs> Where is <Yeah>. it from? <laughs> yeah. How did you yeah. got here? How do you How experience you working um, in a, a male-dominated board? So yeah. they had the list of these questions and then they went to like the male CEOs from the companies and they asked exactly these questions to the males and then they were like, um, why are you asking me this? Like, this is a really bit, bad interview. Like, we were talking about my job, right? Like, why are you asking me something about my family? It's nothing to do with my job. And then at the end, the interview told them, like, no, but these are the questions that your colleagues wrote down that they get when they do an interview like you. And then you, the, the story ends in a way that, you know, that the, these, co these male colleagues start to realize that their female colleagues do get treated so much differently mm. also by the outside world. So even if you know in the board you're trying to do the best you can, um, the way we see successful women is so different from the way we see successful men. I would say that uh, what, I'm, what I decided to focus on is to turn activism into political action because I can see that activism is flourishing in Poland uh, upon almost anything uh, but uh, an initiative that would uh, combine the activist struggles into a political progressive leftist called it however action would make a proper impact on the uh, european politics and maybe you can go stand next to yeah? european may is a transnational campaign organized by a collective of activists individuals organizations and concerned europeans 
Im Rahmen des Gipfeltreffens der EU und der Wahlen zum Europäischen Parlament im Mai 2019. Join us. realize what you have once it's taken away from you. And with all the nationalist and right-wing movements in Europe growing, we see how freedoms are being taken away from us and how they are restricted. For me, for example, when I cross a border and I have to show my passport again and there's delays and it's like minor inconveniences, but you appreciate what you had before that. And then when you see that maybe not all people pa people's passports are controlled, but only those of the people that don't necessarily look European. I just feel this, that it's so unjust. I do the Masters in Development Studies, and so one of my internships was about um, assisting uh, project management of um, rural uh, development uh, projects. Uh, in, uh, in the northeast of South Africa, like a province called Limpopo. Uh, and actually, I was hosted by, um, in a black community, um, but I was really the only white guy in that village. Um, uh, also the only European as a result. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and I was really, mm, that felt very uncomfortable because for the first time, you know, you, you realize a lot of the privileges that you have, that you can move around, that you have the money actually to buy everything. Uh, even as a student, you know, I was much richer than um, any member of this community. Uh, and, um, and so, of course, you know, like you realize, oh, um, okay, <laughs> this is how I'm perceived as European, you know, and this is also how the European lifestyle is also perceived. Um, and of course you want to say, no, it's not, <laughs> not only this, it's not only you know, like this very um, idea of wealth and, you know, and being rich and that is very close you know, like to this idea spread by neoliberal capitalism for like a lot of years. But I realize this is also how they see Europe, you know. That, that made me realize actually that I should work more by being in dialogue with Europeans about these topics. All of this actually, you know, like, um, I would say, uh, really dark uh, aspects of the European culture because, of, you know, everybody wants to say, you know, like, very nice things about Europe, but there is also, it's also a place of deep darkness that we have never actually dealt with, and you feel it when you're in these places because of these projections. Say that actually the euro we're like working for is kind of this like it's like paradise on earth you also have to be realistic and like see that kind of in the europe we're living right now even though you might be like happy in the place you live in and you might not have an intention to like move to a different country that there are chances that you'll be not be able to do that like, that is problematic if that hasn't been like a choice and you say like, hey, I want to like move to the Netherlands because I love fries and mayonnaise, which I, which I do better. Also like in the sense of, for example, when I've talked to people in Poland here about the European Union, you know, they're very aware that like 
fuck, I'm a, I'm a teacher here in Poland. I would get like three times as much money like cleaning some like German person's house that sucks. And why can't we have a system that is so just that like everybody has the freedom also to like choose to stay. If we, if we do not change the system and if we do not change Europe, that actually you might be at some point part of those people that are forced to move to a different place. <laughs> The European Union is still kind of um, a place, I still perceive it as a place of liberty, like, I mean, we came quite far with what we have and uh, human rights protection or like all sorts of um, uh, values connected to that are quite developed and we can't let this um, shrink and we should also help um, others uh, and other countries beyond to uh, to uphold the same principles. Okay, okay, wait. How, how have we Ah, yeah, here, that's Where I fell as European first, I don't know. Um, my my grandpa, he uh, worked for the, the the German train company his whole life and uh, he he checked the tickets um, between Frankfurt and Paris and he was not able to speak France and so there was another man from France who had the same job and he was not able to speak German and uh, but they got friends and uh, this friendship still exists but uh, uh, the French man is dead, sadly, but uh, the families are friends. I guess it's really European friendship. I remember as a child, my family and I, and I and my brother, we were often traveling to Sweden and um, Back then, I, I thought it was very normal because we were traveling to another country and it, it took a long time. Like this trip was 10 hours also because of these borders. And, um, but when I got older, uh, like more and more, it was the, the time we traveled there was, we got shorter and shorter because the border controls were getting less, uh, because bridges were being built. So in the end, now we can travel there with six hours driving. And this is something where I kind of realized, okay, working together closer and belonging together is, makes life much easier and makes a trip much more fun. It's important to be involved in everything, what you can be involved and not be the, the very blind and like, you know, the three apes, the blind uh, one without a mouth. And, yeah. what, what we need is like an, an, a Europe that actually um, actually engages with people in their everyday lives, like in terms of like a really working democracy and so on. I think that we exist in a global society, but I don't think it works for everybody. Like the places where we feel inadequate is actually a good place to start to build a sense of collectivity. wanted to be a union for everybody. So, <laughs> I mean, make Europe great for all, not only for uh, the rich people and the, one, the successful ones, but like for everybody living here. It was about, it's my future, and I want to decide um, um, yeah, how to design it. I 
Uh, my girlfriend and I, we are happily expecting uh, the birth of our first child in a couple of weeks. And um, like as every parent, I think we want the best possible environment for our, our daughter to grow up in. But, well, it's not just a nice kindergarten and that we spend as much time and love and care uh, with her, but it's, it's also about the society and the environment where she's going to grow up in. Yeah, and I'm really scared about what's happening in Europe and in many places and that this idea of an you know, like open and solidary Europe, which, which I love, is getting weaker and weaker. And I think it's our responsibility, or like in this moment, my personal responsibility towards my daughter uh, to, to give what I can uh, to, to to enable her to live in an, in an open and solidary uh, continent, country, society, etc. So, the Thank <laughs> you.